All right, good morning. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, this morning a little bit about the power of faith. Uh, in the textbook, Ernest Holmes writes this. He says, uh, those who have great faith have great power. And every time I read that, that gets my attention. Those who have great faith have great power. Now, I believe that everybody has faith in something. There is nobody who has faith in nothing. Sometimes people will say to me, oh, but Dr. Mark, you know, I don't really have faith. And it's like, nah, I want to disagree with that. Because we all have faith in something. And some people would say, well, you know, what I have a lot of is I have a lot of fear. And Ernest Holmes says fear is the negative use of faith. So you've actually got faith. You've just got faith more toward the negative side of the street than the positive side of the street. So, you know, he says, he goes on and he says, we are conscious of darkness only when we are without faith. So this has been really good for me this week because every time I've become uh, aware of something not as it should be, of something being wrong, of something being fearful in the world, I say, oh, this is my opportunity to build my faith. This is where I'm supposed to reconcile my faith. This is where I'm supposed to focus more on spiritual truth than the appearances of the world out here. Now, it says in the Bible that faith comes by hearing the word. And so I would add to that in the science of mind, we would say hearing the word, what word? The word of truth, speaking, and you know, so it's not just hearing, but it's also speaking words of truth. That that starts to impress our mind, our conscious mind and our subconscious mind, and our faith actually does build. So, you know, when I, it's a little surprising when people say so adamantly, well, I'm just not a person of faith, when we all have faith to some extent. Mm -hmm. So I think faith is, what, it, what I mean by faith is a deep inner knowing that that which is sought after for us, whether it's a physical healing or money in the bank account or the perfect right job or home, that which we are seeking after is already ours for the taking because God, the infinite, knows only to give of itself to each and every one of us. So I come back again to this idea that people with great faith have great power. And so if I want to be more powerful and feel like I'm more at cause rather than at effect in a situation, then what this necessitates, what, that's really hard to say this early in the morning. What this necessitates for me is that I expand, that I increase, that I really work on my faith. You know, in the, in the Gospel of Matthew, it says, according to your faith, be it done unto you. All right? So it can only happen to us according to what we have faith in. So I, I wrote this, and I really thought this was good. So, I'm, I, so I like my own talk. Uh, <laughs> that, that prayer is answered because of our belief, not because of what we believe in. That prayer is answered because of our belief. So we have to have faith in God as our source, or as our father, mother, as the infinite, you know, and, and, and not only just our source, but the source of all the good that we might desire. And the way it works is, of course, it works by love. You know, where we have thoughts of condemnation, if we're judgmental, if we're filled with hatred, if we've got prejudice, and on and on and on, um, that's going to be revealed, we're going to be met with resistance, right? It, it must be released so that the divine love that is everywhere and within us can be declared, and then the faith expands and works unhindered. So you can't have life work and keep holding your garbage. I mean, I argued with that forever. That like, no, 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 my life can work, but my garbage is so special, I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to take it everywhere with me. I'm going to put it in nice to me luggage, you know, so that it looks like it belongs. But the fact is, for our life to get better, we have to let go of what I'll just today call our garbage. You all know what that is. I don't need to talk about that. So I think that trust is a step to faith. You know, people who say, you know, I trust God, um, I think often are not realizing that the way God works is that God works through spiritual law, right? So if you say, I trust God, I trust the Lord, you're trusting that the law is working, that things are unfolding according to spiritual law. Our relationship with spirit is a cooperative venture. 
that we teach in the science of mind that we are always in the process of co-creating our life experience. Right? Our life is not just handed to us, we are actually involved in creating something. And as we become more conscious, as we become more awake, more aware, we say, oh, I could create something even a little better. I could make these relationships a little more loving. I could be a little more peaceful over here. See, if we have that understanding, I think we will affirm the divine presence and power of God until the thing that we are desirous of appears. Right? That that's what the science of mind teaches us, that we have to keep affirming the power and the presence of God is real in this situation. I keep doing that and keep doing it and keep doing it. Because, so here, if, if you say, oh my God, I'm so sick. I'm so sick. Oh my God, I'm so sick. I am so, so sick. I've never been so sick before in my whole life. So first of all, universe, I cancel that right now, okay? So I'm not, I'm not accepting that for myself in any way. But if you do that, and we know people who do, right, where they just get on a tear with some thought, some limiting belief, some limiting thought, oh, this is never going to work out, things never work out for me, oh my God, this is just going to get worse and worse and worse, then that's what the universe gives back to us, right? That, that we are, we are co-creating, right? So we can, if, if we would look at um, the Apostle Peter, who represents, met, who metaphysically and spiritually represents faith, Peter's allegiance to Jesus vacillated a lot, right? That what we see is faith is built up through denials of doubt and fear and continuous affirmations of loyalty to the divine idea or the truth or the higher self, right? So this is, this is why I think we, some people like Peter in the Bible because Peter's kind of like us. He has faith and then he kind of loses it. You know, and he's close in, and then he forgets what he knows. And that's like all of us in our journey. We have days, we have moments, we have situations. We'll say, oh my God, I was so good with that person. Oh, God's proud of me. I did really good there. I was loving. I bit my tongue. I didn't bring up the past. I did all those things I know what I'm supposed to do. And then the next person, it all goes down the drain. But, and that's, that's, that's Peter, that's us. Right? So I think we have to have faith in our own spiritual capacity you know, and depend on it in the face of adverse appearances. Right? So, so we say, you know, gee, my problem is so big you know, that I just don't think God can handle this. To which you know what I always say, then just get a bigger God. You know, this is a place where you can do that. That here you can have a God that's bigger than your problem. To which God, a God that looks at your problem and says, eh, no problem at all. Absolutely not. I can handle it. You know, we wonder, can I have faith in myself? And the answer, of course, is absolutely you can. Because each and every one of us, we are the sons and daughters of the Most High, and we inherit the divine nature. So, you know, if, if we are without faith in ourself, we're, I don't think we're going to be, I think it's going to be almost impossible to be successful in anything. And by faith in yourself, I'm talking about faith in God within you. Right? So this is not about faith in your power humanly. It's about faith in the fact that you are divinely sourced, that you are an emanation of God, and therefore you have the qualities and attributes of God within you. you know, uh, so we've said that a negative use of faith is fear, and fear comes down to a belief in two powers, that there's God and there's another power, and they're trying to cancel each other out. That is not the science of mind at all. Science of mind says there's only one power, and that power is God. And so Jesus said, greater things than this will you do. And so every time I read that, I have to go back and read it again two or three times, that greater things than this will you do. What he's talking about is if you have faith, you will do greater things. If you don't have faith, you ain't going to do such great things. Okay? But, but he doesn't say that because I think he's just too nice a guy. Uh, that faith thinking does not, um, it's not guided, is not considering the world of appearances. See, um, it feeds on images generated in the mind of God. You know, what's the highest truth here? So we're confronted with an appearance. We say, what's the highest truth here? What's true about God here? What am I not thinking about this person or this situation that God, in fact, is thinking? Because if I get on board with that, this will, in fact, get better. So I suggest to us that faith is very, very active. It's not passive. See, and when people talk to me about their faith or their lack of faith, they talk about it like it's sort of this dish rag that's just sort of hanging over the sink. You know, like it's just this very limp, ineffective thing. It's like, no, 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 faith is really, really active. You don't just have it, 
you know, it, you cultivate it. We're in the process of cultivating our belief in something all the time. That on a daily basis, we either believe that life is good and life is for us, or life is bad and life is against us. So if I have faith, you know, I trust that everything is working out for the highest and greatest good of all concerned. And that's what I tell myself. Because, you know, so often things work out in a way that's different than I imagined, but actually better than I thought. How many of us have ever had that experience? Yes, that something good came out of it that was even better than I thought. So humanly, my idea of an outcome is usually based on my past experience, right? But with faith, what I'm trusting, what I'm believing, what I'm knowing is that, yes, it could be as good as I think, or it could be even better, and I always want to stay open to the even better. You know, because God is infinite. So, of course, God has multiple ways for things to work out that I haven't even considered yet. See, beyond that, in the realm of pure spiritual truth, everything is always, always working out for the highest good of everyone. This is what we need to know. Now, humanly, we don't like the looks of this because we think, oh, no, they're such a wonderful, sweet, dear person. They shouldn't be going through this experience. But... I, you know, I don't know what people are working out. I don't know what their spirit is here to learn, heal, grow from. Maybe this difficulty they're having is the last thing they need to do before their spirit soars unencumbered into whatever is next for them. So we may not like it that way, right? But, but with faith, we realize that our opinion and our desire about how we think it should be aren't necessarily the way it will work out. You know, so when I, things aren't working out my way, I say, well, but I have faith that this is ultimately working out for good. Besides, you know, I don't know what anybody else is actually really working on as they're going through things in their life, and because sometimes I don't even know what I'm working on when I'm going through things in my life. So how could I possibly know, you know? So, and, so, and I, don't have to be, I don't have to have the specifics. I can just know, you know what? God is right where they are, and good will come from this. This is serving them on some level. See, faith may also be setting aside our personal shoulds, our musts, uh, our opinions, our beliefs, and moving into the flow of what is actually, actually happening. In this faith, in this faith, you know, acceptance, this, this uh, idea of I have the ability to just accept what is right now, is above opinion. We've heard that, you know, if one has the faith of a mustard seed. How many people heard that? You remember in the 70s, people used to wear little mustard seeds around their neck and stuff like that? It says in the Bible, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you could say to the mountain, mountain move, and the mountain will move. Well, because a mustard seed is so small, people have assumed that what that meant is you needed just barely, barely, barely to have any faith at all, just the <laughs> tiniest faith at all, and you're going to move mountains. Now, I think that's uh, inaccurate. Uh, true, a mustard seed is very, very small, but when planted, it grows huge. It is massive. In fact, in the East, they're considered weeds because they're just these big, weedy, weedy things. A mustard, one mustard seed will, once it grows, produce millions and millions and millions of mustard seeds. Okay? So that's, that's a pretty good outcome. You know, but the mustard seed doesn't have to think, oh, I got to grow into a big plant. I got to grow into a big plant. I got to grow into a big plant. It already has within it all that's necessary to grow into a big, lavish plant. So do we. God in me is here to love. Uh, God in you is here to love. God in me and you is here to express, to heal, to, to create. If we have faith that everything will turn out all right, it follows logically that everything actually already is all right in the mind of God. Now is, is the all right that we were praying for a little earlier, you know, maybe yesterday. So you say, well, I, I just don't have that much faith in myself. You know, I just, I just don't believe in myself. Well, we've got to talk about this because then how can the universe believe in you? How can the universe respond to you in a faithful way if you don't have faith and belief in yourself? Okay, so it's like, okay, the universe will say, okay, have it your way, right? But if you don't believe in you, you're obligated to believe in external things. Think about that. If you don't believe in the power and presence of God within you right now, then what you have to believe in is what's out here, right? The, the people, events, things that look like different powers, externals. And so your belief in yourself is really extraordinarily important, perhaps the most important endorsement you will ever get. 
You know, if you're in the Olympics and you get a gold medal, you know, what you hope to be able to do an endorsement for Nike or to be on the Wheaties box, you know? <laughs> you know, because I remember when I was a kid, those people who wound up on the Wheaties box, they had arrived. You know, that was it. That was just like the greatest thing because I just knew, it's like, wow, what could be better than that than being on the Wheaties box? <laughs> then you get a little older and you find out a lot of things are better than that, but that's okay, <laughs> you know. So, so other people's belief in you only is a reflection of your actual belief in yourself. So sometimes people show up in our life and, and they don't have a lot of faith in us. But if we tell the truth, there's part of us that doesn't have much faith in us. And they're just holding up a little mirror to us. Ooh, wow, I hate that, I hate that. So what I do is I avoid that person rather than confront that belief or lack of belief in myself. So again, your belief in yourself is the most important endorsement you'll ever get. Truth is, you are so okay, you are so loved that God made you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and God doesn't make any junk. Besides, people who have faith in themselves achieve far more in life, achieve by way of relationships or happiness or peace of mind, on and on and on, than people who do not have faith in, their selves, in themselves. You know, I think confidence is a form of faith. You know, in the gospel, faith and doubt do battle in Peter, you know, just like in us. Sometimes we have faith, sometimes we've got doubt, right? And so I wonder, why would Jesus choose as his chief disciple someone who seemed sometimes so weak, sometimes cowardly, someone, someone who was vacillating back and forth? Well, but then I think, well, but he was also enthusiastic, and he could be very bold, and he was receptive, and he was teachable. And I think, ah, oh, that's what I have to be. That's what I have to be on the spiritual path. I have to be enthusiastic and bold and receptive and teachable. And see, now, when the occasion occurred, Peter had never walked on water. But when Jesus said, come, he boldly went out to meet him. Now, we all know this story that doubt entered his mind and he started to sink, right? So a helping hand was extended to him and, and he was made stronger by the experience. So you know where, where we don't have faith, I, this is one of the things that is an incentive for me personally is that you know as my faith increases, I'm gonna be made stronger by this experience. So W.C. Field was close to death. And, uh, and he was sitting up in bed, and he was reading the Bible. And uh, a friend came in and said, uh, Bill, what are you doing? You don't believe in God. And W.C. Fields' response was, looking for loopholes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now I can see it makes sense to me why Jesus would choose Peter, who eventually he would say, on this rock I will build my church. You know, because he's so much like all of us, vacillating yet enthusiastic, cowardly, yet really, really bold. And so I think that spirit invites us to step out where we've never stepped. That, yep, yeah, you can doubt, you can fear, we've all done it. But we also, like Peter, can have a little more faith and say, you know what, I know that that which I seek is seeking me. That's what Ernest Holmes says in the textbook, and I love that. The good that I seek, and that good is, it's, it's, your, it's your health, it's your happy relationship, it's your right and perfect home, whatever it is, know that the way the universe is wired is the good that I seek is also seeking me. That's faith, let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to remember that right here, we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite, loving, intelligent spirit. And that that spirit of God in us is in fact the most true, most real thing about us. We are emanations of the Most High God, emanations of divine love and consciousness. And so I speak the word for us today that our faith is increased just by nature of hearing the word and speaking the word and listening to the word and immersing ourselves in the word. And that word, of course, is spiritual truth. And it says, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. So I claim greater freedom for each and every one of us today, that wherever we have felt not free, I am certain that it is the will of God for each and every one of us to rise up freely and unencumbered and move forward in our life in healthy, loving ways. 
So we include in our prayer our family members, parents and children, all of our friends and loved ones, and anyone in particular who's in our heart today. We see them in our mind's eye and we wrap our spiritual arms around them. And we know that God is right where they are, as the only power, the only activity, the only presence. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world around us. So all of those things that pull at our attention, that could make us feel fearful or doubting, we claim that God in us is greater than all of that. That God in the world is greater than any appearance. Because God is the very love and foundation of every person's being. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams and all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that today our faith is increased. And with a full heart, I give thanks that this is so. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.